What's up, y'all? Letting the chickens out. <clears throat> Doing the morning chores. Figured I'd bring you along. There's the coop. Where the 13 chickens live. See them in here. All right, so the chickens are out. Now they can go do whatever they want. We've got some eggs to collect here. So you can see down here's our nesting boxes. It's just kind of the little makeshift box setup that we've done. So we've got three here, including one on the floor, and three here. Okay. So we'll take those, and then we've got another spot we got to check to. All right, so we won't disturb this one, but you can see there's a feed box there in the corner. That's from the horses. Uh, it's the feed boxes that we used to use for them, and the chickens really liked it, so I decided to keep it. So we put some bedding in there, and they've been using it as nesting boxes. Uh, you can see one of my subliminal motivational messages there on the wall. It says, be here now. Uh, I like to remind myself uh, to be here now. Makes sense, right? Okay, so real quick, I just wanted to touch on something. A lot of people have this misconception that chickens stink. Well, mismanaged chickens do stink. Um, but our chickens, they stay in the coop every night, and there's virtually no smell. I'm standing inside of the coop right now. Um, I mean, obviously, you can see some, you know, poop where they've, they've dropped, but, you know, it does not stink in here. And the reason for that is because we follow Joel Salatin's principle of deep mulch bedding. And what that is, is basically at the bottom of the coop, um, if you look down here, there's just a bunch of wood chips and wood shavings. Uh, and that's actually, you know, eight or ten inches deep right now. And so what that does is that acts as a, a carbon diaper, if you will, um, and absorbs all of that ammonia and all those stinks uh, that, you know, you, you face with chickens. Uh, there's another one of the motivational messages that I keep to remind myself to embrace the suck. You know, sometimes life sucks. Embrace it. Uh, but I did want to show you guys that, that the deep mulch bedding, it really does work. Um, and what I've done here, I'll flip my camera around. What I've done is as the, the mulch bedding has started to build up, I'll take it and I'll turn it over and I'll bring it out here into this little common area that we have in the barn. Uh, and the chickens, as you can see, they pick through it. I throw some mealworms and some snacks down for them that they like. Um, and they pick through it and you know, it's it's really convenient So what this is doing is this is basically acting as a base layer for a compost system that we're going to start incorporating onto the farm here um, This is just the beginnings of that. I'm working on getting some wood chips and some different uh, You know sources of organic material to add to the compost pile But the plan is to keep the chickens, you know doing their job making them making them earn their keep so to speak uh, So that's kind of what we got going on with the chickens um, I'm going to do some basic chainsaw maintenance this morning. I think I'm going to try to do a time-lapse video for you guys. Uh, so we'll get into that. All right, so here's the last couple days worth of eggs. It's pretty sweet. About 10 or 11 a day right now, so that's not too bad. We've got 12 egg layers, so we plan on having a dozen a day. Uh, that's the plan. Most of them are laying now, so that's good. Like I said, we're going to get into this chainsaw maintenance. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the plan here today. We're going to maintain this saw and then I'm going to cut up some buck and limit tree. Uh, so I know some people are probably going to have some questions in regards to what kind of equipment we run here on the farm. Uh, so we do run steel. That's uh, I'm a big fan of steel. I prefer steel. Uh, nothing against Husqvarna or Echo or any other brands. I just, you know, that's what I like. So I'll flip the camera around here and I'll show you kind of the setup of what we've got laid out here. Um, I'm working off the tail end of this wagon. Like I mentioned in my last video, I've got a neighbor that's renting some space from us. So uh, he said that it's it's fine if I use the wagon for whatever, as long as it stays under the the roof and you know it stays dry in the barn. So I okay, so as you can see, I've got a few things laid out here. Um, I've got my sharpening kit or my file kit, the roll kit, like we call it in the field. Uh, I've got a two-in-one file here. I've got a rat tail or a stick file. And then I've got some brushes. Uh, this is my little wedge pouch that I keep. Uh, this is what I carry out into the woods with me. Um, I've got some wedges in here. I keep a flat file. I've got a Sharpie, and that's where my scrunch stays. I've also got a whistle in case I need it. Got a gallon jug of bar, bar oil here. 
um, and then I've got a quart. So I typically fill the saw out of the quart, and then I'll refill the quart out of the gallon jug. Um, I do mix my own fuel, so I've got a mix fuel there. Uh, this is an extremely important item that I keep in my in my saw kit. Uh, it's a trauma pack. Um, now this is, you know, marketed from uh, an outdoor company, uh, but the basic idea is that it's got... Okay, so I've got the trauma pack opened up now. Unfortunately, the bag ripped on me, so I'm going to have to come up with a different container to put it in. Uh, but basically, I've got a tourniquet. Uh, that's super important. If you're not, if you've never seen one, that's what they look like. I've got a clotting sponge. So that's a, basically a piece of gauze that will absorb a whole lot of blood. We've got a triangular bandage in case you need to prop an arm or a leg up. Another uh, trauma dressing absorbs a lot of fluids. And then I've got a pressure dressing here. Uh, Rubber gloves and a biohazard bag in case you need it. Got some trauma shears. Got some duct tape. Believe it or not, that's what that is. We've got a roll of duct tape. Um, and then we've got a little small Sharpie. The chicken does not come in the trauma pack. Uh, but we've got a couple that are joining the maintenance class here. They're enjoying it, so we'll let them hang out. But yeah, that's the trauma pack. Okay, the next couple items that I've got here. I've got a pair of safety glasses. So when I'm sharpening, I don't get anything in my eye. And then I've got a pair of gloves. Uh, shout out to Mechanics Gloves. Uh, they make really excellent gloves. These leather palmed uh, work gloves are fantastic. Uh, they last really, really well. They work well in the field. You know, they'll even deal with the chicken stepping on it. You can't beat them. Uh, Mechanics is also, they do a lot of good stuff. So look into them. Check them out. So that's that. The saw is maintenance now and it's ready to run. So just a little bit about this saw specifically. Uh, this is an MS-261C. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. MS-261C. It's uh, Steel's professional series saw. Uh, so it's, it's a really great saw. I love it. Um, I've had it for almost a year now and I run the crap out of it. And it's a fantastic saw. It starts every time. Um, like I said, I'm a big fan of steel. I really like steel products. I like what they do in the world. 
Um, I think they're just a, a pretty good company all around. Um, so this is a saw that I run. It's got an 18 inch bar on it. It's more than enough for what I need. Um, I've looked at getting a bigger saw maybe in the future, but you know, I don't need it now. Uh, most of the trees that we've got around here, or this is plenty of saw to, to handle most everything we've got. Uh, so I will take you outside here. We've got a little bit of a firewood stack going, as you can see on both sides of the barn here. Uh, so the plan is to start splitting some of that up. And what I'm going to do, I'll pause the video here and I'll flip my camera around. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to buck and limb a couple of these trees here that I've dropped. They were impeding on this power line here that I talked about in my previous video. Uh, so like I said, we've had a long-term goal to clear this power line. I'll walk down the hill a little bit further so that way we can get a better shot of it. Uh, yeah, so this tree line was really impeding on this power line previously. Um, and over the past 10 years or so, uh, we've had three or four instances where one of our trees is actually a branch has fallen on the line and knocked out power to ourselves and several neighbors. Uh, so that was something that I wanted to get taken care of. Unfortunately, the local energy distribution company um, has, I guess, not taken the time to maintain this set of lines. So I've taken it upon myself to do it. Um, so I've got a couple trees that I've dropped here. Uh, one was impeding on the old fence. I decided to drop it right through the fence because the fence is coming down anyways. Um, and then I've got another tree that's of similar size and stature there right behind it. Uh, so the plan is, is I'm going to buck and limb this tree. Uh, and I'll give you guys some basic pointers as to, to how I operate a saw. So the first steps first, like I said, are, you know, on the farm we've got to be safe. So I've got to put my chainsaw chaps on, put a helmet on, and uh, make sure that I've got my eye pro you know, that's, that's on as well. So we'll get that taken care of and then we'll get started. Okay, so I look a little different now. Uh, unfortunately, one of my earmuffs broke off the other day. So I've got an ear plug in one ear and I'll use my earmuff on this guy. I've got the steel Promark helmet. Uh, you know, it's good to protect your head. It's important. I've got some chaps on here. Got the steel Promark chaps. Uh, so shout out to steel for keeping people safe. I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys buckled up here and get everything in place. Uh, and then we'll get started. I'll put this camera on a time lapse and you guys can just watch the process of, of what I'm doing. Um, I try to be methodical in my thinking. I try to, you know, do things for a specific reason whenever I'm cutting especially uh, because I want to be effective in, in the energy that I'm using uh, and I want to be effective in, you know, making sure that things are getting done both safely but efficiently as well. So that way we're not wasting too much time. So I'll get this camera set up and we'll get into it.
right, well, that's that. I got that tree cut up. That was bucked and limbed. So if you notice the process, I was trying to be methodical and, you know, go up and down the tree and not move back and forth a thousand times. Um, and if you notice, I was trying to do my best at clearing my footing, uh, keeping all the branches and, and firewood logs and stuff out from under my feet so that way I don't trip and fall. Definitely using the chain brake anytime I'm moving around, uh, especially if, I'm, if I've got stuff under my feet. So that way if I do trip and fall, I don't ac accidentally, you know, hurt myself. You can hear the, the rooster crowing in the background. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Um, I hope that time lapse works out pretty cool. I think you guys will like it. Uh, that's just a little bit about, you know, you know, basics of, of what I do whenever I maintain a saw and then go out and run it. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, I'm going to work on a little bit more content today, uh, but that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention is usually what I'll do, uh, rather than carrying my, my entire trauma pack with me, is I'll just take my, uh, my tourniquet and throw it in my bibs here or uh, you know throw it in my side pocket or whatever if I'm cutting by myself um, it's never ideal to cut by yourself uh, but whenever you're you know in a rural environment and there's not people around and you know you may have to cut by yourself so if you cut by yourself just be safe you know I'm not in the business of telling anybody what to do I just like to show people how I do things so like I said I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a like subscribe and we'll see you on the next one